Alright, hello everyone, my name is Shep and welcome back to the Butcher's Circus. Today we have a potentially very fun match coming through. We're playing against someone I actually don't know, Daniel Rockins, and they are our darkest one opponent for the day. Wait a second, is this, isn't this the Flazen special or the Flazen comp? You know, the Crusader, Abomination, Man at Arms, Grave Robber. I know what this is. That's a very good setup that my opponent has right here. However, it's a little bit wrong. You're supposed to put the Abomination in third because, uh, well, he doesn't get punished for it because I don't have uh, the, the net to actually get more move chance. But in this team, you're supposed to put the Abomination in third because it's his safest position. If the Grave Robber gets pulled, not only does she have a lot of dodge, she can also just Shadow Fade and he's back in the position where he wants to be. You usually don't really have a great place to put the Abomination, and this team kind of uh, kind of escapes that. Because if you put him in position 2 and you go second, then you can get slammed. If you put him in position 1, you don't have access to the spawn, and you can also get purged by the Lamper. And if you put him in position 3, the character behind you can get pulled, and then you'll be useless. But with this team, not so much. This team can do better than that. Now, what do I want to go for here? Do I want to just go for a command? Do I want to go for a bolster? Do I want to go for a stun? Uh, there's a lot of things I want to do. I'm gonna go for a little bit of a risky stun here on the Abomination, because today we are playing a Stress Vestal team. Now, you've probably never seen this in your lives, but this was a kind of meta early on into the Butcher Circus. Kind of meta. It was a decent comp. Not exactly what I'm playing, not with a flash on. People ran doggy with this. I believe it was a, a player called Sis that I played a little bit against. Back in back in the day, back in the good old days of the, of the start of the Witcher Circus. It's been a while, but the game balance is still the same. Uh, well, what can I say about it? Yeah, it's just the Witcher Circus. Never change, I guess. So yeah, the team had a doggy, and it was very susceptible against other stress teams, because, you know, in today's meta, everyone kind of either has a really good mark team or has a flashlight call to the web solution. So playing a team like this, the Vestal is getting abused and not having a flashlight against stress teams means that you're also getting abused because you have nothing to deal with flashlight. So yeah, that is pretty freaking rough. Now against what we're playing here, I think this is going to be a pretty decent matchup because we're going to have a very hard time dealing with that uh, Grave Robber because she has a lot of dodge. And if I want to hit her, I'm going to need Reign of Sorrows with command buffs. Sadly, the Vestal stun, well, not sadly, thankfully, the Vestal stun doesn't reach position 4. I think that would be really broken. But And since it doesn't reach position 4, we actually have a... Um, we actually have a little bit of a problem in terms of this Grave Robber because he, she can just spam Panic Darts. However, she doesn't have Pick to the Face, so if I leave her for last, I'm going to be a very, very happy Shepherd Dogger here. So what do I want to go for first? I'm actually thinking of um, a little bit of a weird play, but it's what I want to do. I want to drop this Abomination down to zero, and just doing this is going to be pretty smart. I could have gone for a, a second stun, just to hope that I do three damage, hope that I get the stun as well, and then he'd still drop to Destro with the bleed that he had. But considering I don't have the Brass Knuckles, my damage is... Um, I'm, I'm kind of lacking that plus 10% damage. So I will, and I'm also like the, the extra stun chance, so I was neither expecting the stun nor the 3 hit to actually be too reliable, so I think just uh, doing this is a little bit safer. So yeah, you can see 2 to 3, I believe we can do 4 if we have the brass knuckles, so that would be better. Or maybe it's 4 with a crit, I'm not entirely sure, but the stun chance isn't that great when you only have one of the stun trinkets. We are sacrificing the brass knuckles for the idol of purity, which is going to give us a better, a better matchup against damage teams, because you can still relatively comfortably stun like Jesters, Crusaders, I mean very comfortably you can get the first stun because you still have 130% stun chance and then you can do very big heals that are very difficult to deal with, very very difficult compared to Shep's stress for example, like if you had a doggy here you'd be quite lacking on the healing but since I don't have a doggy, since I have a Vestal itself, I actually have a very decent amount of healing. Of course, my offense is garbage <laughs> compared to to having a doggy in the back line just spamming Count Seri. But what can you do about it? Now the question is, do I want to use command or do I want to use a bell here? I'm going to use command because I'm going to need it for, for the start of next round. I'm going to de-transform, I'm going to go be smile, I'm going to go reign of sorrows. And considering that the bell hit chances were like 85 and 66, you know, I'm just better off using the command here. So it's going to be an absolution and uh, there's still 12 bleed on him, which means I'm going to get awesome value right now. From the transforming going beast spell. So you might be wondering, well Shep, why do you today actually have the clasp of the beast instead of the net? Well I wanted to make this seem a little bit tankier than usual and uh, with the vessel I could 
uh, with the vessel on the class of the beast, I could accomplish that a little bit better if we were actually playing against damage. So that would have been pretty cool to to witness, but um, sadly the class of the beast here isn't going to do too much. But it's still giving us a, plus, uh, a little bit of HP plus protection and the on stress, or, I mean on melee inflicting stress, I mean you, you can't go wrong with it, right? So sadly, even with the Vestal's very decent resistances of 40 against Blight and 40 against Bleed, uh, yeah, Panic Darts has 140 pace, so with the Satchel of Dirty Tricks you literally cannot resist it. And uh, that means that we are already ticking down to zero, which definitely sucks here. I'm gonna click the Mandarm, so I'm gonna drop a bell just so there isn't too much damage from like a Zealous or anything that happens right now. You know, you win in doubt, bell it out. So we're just gonna do that and we're gonna adapt to the situation because the Vestal's probably gonna have to heal herself, but she's definitely doomed. She has a lot of blight on her, she's already at 100 stress, a couple more panic darts and she's gone. That's gonna be very annoying. So even with the bell of debuff and our 10% protection, we still take a 9 um, from the stunning blow crit from this Crusader. He doesn't even have a stun trinket. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know why he's going uh, stunning blow. I I think that if you're playing like a generalist crusader like this, you should bring Sacred Blade because it's not something I usually do. I usually think this is a, a silly idea. If you're playing a stress team crusader, you should bring Zealous with double stress trinkets like you have here and just spam Zealous to, to kill my characters. If you want to bring kind of a generalist crusader, then you're gonna have to stun, and if I was playing a team that had like an Arbalus, I could flare the debuffs, I could flare the stun away, and I'd be a very happy Shepherd Doggy right now, but sadly there is no justice in this world, and the Vessel does not get her own flare. She gets Illumination, but it doesn't do even a third of what the flare does, so that is pretty sad. One thing I can do though, is I can kind of wait out my blights a little bit. I can go for a stun on this crusader and then I can heal myself. I was hoping for a crit there to give myself more healing skills and then I could just drop a really big Divine Grace for pretty much uh, all of my health bar. I would have, I would have absolutely loved that. So it's gonna be a beast file right now and uh, yeah that's some blight, that's some stress, definitely a good play. He can stay at this store, he's not at risk at all. So that's something that I'm gonna have to, to deal with somehow. I still have so much blight on me. She moves forward, which opens her up to be smile. That's uh, f far from from perfect here. Oh, how I wish I could hit position 4. I can with Illumination, but yeah, I don't really want to do that. I'm just gonna heal myself here with the Vestal, just to, just to keep her alive for a little bit. If you want to keep spamming Panic Darts into her, then so be it. Once she's gone, I think my Flagellant and my Abomination Mander Arms have been doing a better job at taking out your team than the other characters. Uh, then your characters have been doing it, taking out my team. So, what should we do here? Maybe a Bellow first to just reduce damage further, or maybe... do I need Accuracy buffs? I mean, I have plus 20, I think I need to get stress from the Bellows, or else I'm not even going to get afflictions. Yeah, the, the big problems with this team is that, even though you have healing, uh, sometimes it's just not enough against against smart teams, because they have more actions than the new do, because they're getting stuns, they have more attacking actions than you have heals. Even if you heal a lot with the Vessel, the Arbalist can pretty much just drop you down to 0 HP again. <laughs> and another huge problem is that you're getting stuns while also trying to apply Bellow debuffs. And yeah, uh, the Arbalist can flare away the stuns, can flare away the battle debuffs, and she can flare away your hope for a just match. So we're gonna drop a battle here, start getting closer, drawing ever closer to those afflictions, and once we do actually get the second transformation off, we will be able to get everyone afflicted, which is really good. Flagellant is also doing an amazing job at dropping everyone down to zero. Like, this is all Flagellant, this is all Flagellant's handiwork. Uh, he is. He dropped the abomination to zero with the bleeds. He's dropping these two characters closer to zero with the bleeds, and the crusader is um, kind of getting not perma stunned, but kind of stunned, and uh, his actions aren't doing too much compared to what they could be doing because of our vessel. So the vessel is still doing okay comparatively to the uh, grave robber. So right now, uh, what does that do? That's just stress, that's okay. I'm gonna transform here, and I'm gonna go for a little bit of a weird one. I'm gonna go for a slam on. I, yeah, I'm gonna go for a slam of the Abomination. Sadly, I don't get the 25. If I got the 25 there, I'd have to say it would be GG on the spot, because without any transformations, and uh, with this Crusader almost afflicted, and with the Grave Robber kind of taking down to zero, I think my Flashbone would be pretty much able to 1v3 this. 
Uh, even with these characters, you know, uh, kind of dying, because Vessel's very close to dying, the Abomination's kind of close to dying, Zell's Panic Toxie's gone. So yeah, would have loved to see that happen, especially with no horror from the transformation, but uh, he stays alive, even hitting himself, but he does stay alive, thankfully for him. We're gonna click here, we're just gonna drop another Rain of Stars. So yeah, we're getting pretty lucky to hit this, uh, this Grave Robber quite as much as we are hitting her, so that's pretty nice. And you're gonna see why Toxin Trickery is kind of bad, because even if you use it right now, uh, that's that's the thing with DOT clearing abilities, like, uh, the Flash ones is applying Green of Stars of you, you have like 20 HP out of your 30, because you've been hit like for a turn, and uh, you used your action, and then you got hit again, then you're gonna use your action again, like, you're bleeding for 12, you're gonna bleed almost down to zero, like, Oh yes, let me clear this huge DOT I have on me. To do that, I have to click my character, eat the DOT amount, and then I can clear it. <laughs> Which, it, it's really bad. It's easier when you have an Arbos and you can clear other people's DOTs. Also, it's a Plague Doctor, but come on, let's be, let's be honest. Plague Doctor is not gonna, gonna stay long enough in the back to actually use her, her battlefield medicine. So, yeah. At least we got a second transformation off. At least the the vessel is also taking down a lot, so she's not going to survive for very long. I'm honestly considering just not stalling here too much, just going for a stun, uh, which is stalling, but I think even more stalling would be going to find Grace right now. But actually, you know what we can do? Uh, oh, you idiot. Selfish. Oh my god. Uh, we can do this, and I think this is better than healing myself right now. I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna remove her action, make her go not quite afflicted, but close. Close to afflicted, and she's gonna be taking down to zero next turn. She's also gonna be getting afflicted from it, which is awesome. Now, one thing I can do is, I can immediately go for my second Vestal action, or I can move forward here and then try to heal myself, try to stabilize. Honestly, I don't think there's any stability here left for us. I'm just gonna click my Vestal action, another act up, and I'm gonna go for a stall on the Crusader, just prevent him from doing Crusader things and make him go afflicted. And I am happy with my Vestal. If she survives, like, the Panic Darts, if the Panic Darts doesn't come through or something, then by the start of next round, then yeah, sure, I might save her, but right now I think she she's done for <laughs> I think she's done. So the Man Arms is gonna go Bellow here, that's perfectly fine. He has an interesting set of Protector, Skite, Insignia, Frag, that's not something you see every day. Uh, it is good on defense and also kind of good on Bellows, but you don't get a lot of protection from it and you don't get any stun resistance from it or any DOT resistance from it, so it is lacking on those departments. And it's also not as good as having Eerie Eye because you can't bypass stealth, but I mean... We've gone into this debate for very many times. A lot of people see Insignia Frank like, oh, it's a character-specific trinket. Surely it's got to be better than Eerie Eye. Like, it's got all those lo lovely stats right there. Uh, if you have this typical stress MAA setup, uh, if you have that, you don't need the plus, uh, the plus crit, you don't need the plus on attack crit buff party. Like, those are literally going to be meaningless here. So, yeah. Uh, having an eerie eye to actually give you, still give you the 12 accuracy, giving you the debuff chance, and also giving you the ability to bypass stealth, while it will be barely used, like only very rarely will we see that bypass stealth coming into effect, it can come into effect if you're up against only one character, like a grave robber or, or an antiquarian, they're going shadow fate slash take cover, and normally you'd be able to bellow all the time, right, because it hits all four characters, so even if the characters are stealth, you're still able to hit them. But against those specific characters, if they're the last ones alive, you're gonna wish you had that eerie eye. And I've been in that position, like, a grand total of twice. Which isn't very much considering the amount of times I've played stress, but yeah, if you do want to bring a pure stress man at arms, you don't even have retribution, just go, uh, just go eerie eye, it's better. So the abomination can't move forward because the man at arms essentially says no, he passes with that, uh, can, no, doesn't pass with the paranoid, but the paranoid forces the irrational abomination to pass. Which is wonderful. Right now we're not taking down to a uh, heart attack here, even with the extra stress. So we can just de-transform and um, I would love to be spell right now, but if I do that I'm just gonna die. And uh, yeah, it's, it is, it would accomplish quite a bit. It would accomplish quite a bit, but do I want to stay alive? That's the question. <laughs> do I want to stay alive or do I want to accomplish quite a bit? Um, hmm. Should we let the flagellant and men at arms just duo team this? You know what? Let's let's let that happen. Oh no, why did you die? I wanted this to be a 2v4. 
I guess it's gonna be a 3v3 now and then a 2v3, oh well. I wanted the Grave Robber not to die so he could make this a full-on 2v4, like full-on power between the men at arms with this setup and the and the flash one, but oh well, it looks like that's not happening. Um, but you know, we we still we're still gonna pretty much have it. Actually the abomination might survive this, as long as the Crusader passes with paranoid or something. No, he's probably dead. It's very unlikely that he survives, but it could happen. Crazier things have happened in the Butcher's Circus. We all know that. I'm gonna go in of storage right now. I'm I'm actually I actually wonder if it's gonna do damage. Cause I have minus 80%. Yeah, it does zero damage because of that protection. It does damage against the um, against the abomination though. Oh, he's almost dead. Is he dead? He's taking five stress plus eleven plus sixteen. No, it's not enough. Yeah, it is, uh, it is not enough. Also, he has bolster, so bolster is helping a little bit against their extra stress. But if he doesn't heal right now, if he doesn't de-transform heal himself and stay in position 4, I'm just gonna kill him with a bellows, so he's forced to do it if he wants to stay alive. Oh, he's out of heals. Oh, son, I'm sorry. Oh, he says no again! He has to pass! Oh my god, that is nasty. He's just gone then. He is absolutely gone. Do I want to save the abomination here? Do I want to be mean like that? Yeah, let's be mean like that. Let's keep the abomination alive here. <laughs> I'm not gonna let you get the free kill with this else accusation. Nah. You can hit my position one and my position four character with this else if you want to. Oh, he's gonna go for a heal. Even going for a heal, it wouldn't be enough. Even if you heal for six, he's still bleeding down to this door, so he's done for. He's done. You should uh, you should not be trying to save him here. You should also not be doing that. Again, this Crusader, like, my flagellant is completely unharmed. Completely unharmed right now. He has pretty much zero stress. He has taken zero points of damage. He has two redeems. He has two examinates. He's fine. If you have a Crusader, you are actually pretty decent at dealing with flagellants. You can actually deal with a flagellant as a stress team with two characters. Either, no, a, a couple characters. Either you have a Grave Robber for the end of the match and spam Panic Darts on him, which works rather well. I do have an Abomination to transform, apply Horror, which is always great, but it doesn't win you the match like at the very end of the game. Or you can have an, another Flagellum to fight fire with fire, and you know, they're both broken so they both go at each other's throats. Or you can have a Crusader to spam Zealous, and with that Zealous accusation, the Flagellum's gonna be taking down to zero, he's gonna be steadily taking stress because it has a very big stress base, right? So with that big stress base, instead of... actually that was a mistake, yeah, the Manorov's gonna stay alive now, but it's alright. Instead of um, only doing like 12 stress and the flagellant heals 10 from the Gauntlet of, Gauntlet of Absolution, you do 20 stress base. With this you have 25 stress and he's only covering 10 of that, so he's taking 15 every turn. Which doesn't sound like much uh, compared to what his else usually does, especially with Bolster it's going to be even less. But it is definitely a lot more than what a, a Bellow can do. A Bellow is pretty much useless. So having a Crusader is is a blessing when you're actually playing with these uh, with these stress teams, but a blessing that was squandered here by just going stun after stun after stun. It is not the place I'll usually go for, and you kind of know how I how I feel about playstyles that aren't mine. I, I I'm I'm quick to criticize them. And I know that's kind of a mistake in me, because there's a lot of fun playstyles in Butcher's Circus, and I think going stuns is, uh, in stress teams is possible, even though it's not what I usually do, but if you want to go that, that's at least take Sacred Blade. Like, you just can't go wrong with Sacred Blade. Imagine if this Crusader went courageous with the Sacred Blade. I would be screwed right now, I'd be unable to bleed him, I'd be unable to stress him, I might even lose this as, as it is, if he actually had the Sacred Blade. But if you're running two stress trinkets and your bread and butter ability is still stunning blow, yeah, that's not gonna work out for you. So the Crusader moves back here, which doesn't really do anything. He's paranoid, so that's minus 25% damage. Now he's gonna start using that Zealous. And as you can see, it doesn't do much stress. It does 12 stress total, which, you know, it ain't, it ain't much, but it's honest work, I'm gonna have to say. So now we can start spamming these, uh, these bellows and we can start going for these punishes. So. Yeah, the final judgment is soon upon you, you fear. Uh, you're, you're the only one less al le left alive, little crusader. And we can start going for these bleeds on him as well, which is, uh, which is wonderful here. Because he has less bleed resistance, and we have more bleed chance. And once we start bleeding him out and causing him to have heart attacks, he's not going to survive very long. So here comes another Zealous. Also, keep in mind that if you do get a crit, it's going to hurt a lot more. 
and I will get afflicted uh, shortly after that happens. But that's going to be the GG from Daniel Rockins, and let's go on for a match number two. Actually, I think that was a pretty good episode already. We managed to go back to Darkest rank one, and uh, yeah, on to Darkest one we go with the stress vest. Also, it looks like she still did a very okay job. So I'm just going to show you what the initial team was. I think I've played it before on the channel. I think J-Man covered it as well. It was called Tainted Devotion, and it went something like this. You would put a doggy here, and you'd have kind of this team, which was the counterpart to not having the Vestal and just moving all these characters back a little bit and putting the Crusader in here. So you had these two alternatives. If you wanted to play the Crusader, you could, and if you wanted to play Vestal, you could play the Vestal. Obviously, I think playing with the Crusader is a lot better than the Vestal because Crusader has Zealous, he has the heals with Rowing to the Flame, and he's honestly just an awesome character. I think playing Flashbolt is even better because that's Chef's Stress. So you see that the base of this team is always a uh, base of stress teams, like most of them have Man at Arms, uh, Abomination, like 90% of stress teams have these two characters because they're just awesome. And the other characters are just trying to give you the best, uh, the best abilities, like the best mix of defense and offense. You want to have a good defense, such as a flagellant with his uh, Call to the Web Solution and his heals, as well as having a good offense with his bleeds and the stress output, and the two other characters that you pick for your stress teams kind of have to be a mix and match of that. If you do want to beat the Mark teams, if you do want to beat the other stress teams, and if you do want to beat the occasional DOT team that kind of just counters your defensive uh, abilities because protection doesn't matter too much against DOT. So anyway, hope you enjoyed the match. Uh, and I'll see you again another time. Cheers.